transportation of water and minerals takes place and we will also study about transportation system in human beings also so all organisms require food water and oxygen for survival right to live day to day life to survive we need food water and oxygen but how do these substances are transported to all parts of the body we have to understand how these food water and oxygen get transported to all parts of the body and not only food water and oxygen transportation of undigested food is also necessary here undigested food goes into the other parts of the body and gets excreted right it happens for animals as well as human beings the undigested food goes into the rectum colon etc and gets excreted through the anus right so that is how transportation of undigested food also takes place so transportation of digested food undigested food and various substances to many parts of the body all this is carried out all these functions are carried out with the help of heart and blood vessels so all the transportation of food water oxygen digested food undigested food to various parts of the body all these functions are carried out with the help of heart and blood vessels so heart and blood vessels together transport the substances in the body in both animals as well as the human beings so these heart and blood vessels together constitute for the circulatory system heart and blood vessels are responsible for transportation of substances and they together constitute the circulatory system so what is circulatory system and what all things come under circulatory system the main thing under circulatory system is blood then after blood we will have blood vessels we have heart we have pulse rate we have breathing rate etc so the first thing in the circulatory system is blood so suppose if we cut our finger accidentally due to a blade or any injury suddenly we bleed start seeing blood so what is blood blood is a fluid which flows in the blood vessels the blood flows in a small small pipe like structures known as the blood vessels and blood is liquid in state so blood is a fluid which flows in the blood vessels so what are the functions of blood it carries oxygen from the lungs to various cells of the body it transports it transports waste for removal of the body transports waste for the removal from the body then it transports digested food from the small intestine to various parts of the body transports oxygen transports undigested food and as well as transports waste for removal from the body so these are the functions of this blood so how do this transportation actually takes place how does the blood carry these various substances from part to part of the body blood is a liquid kind of thing right so it has various substances suspended in it that means inside the blood there are various kinds of cells various kinds of substances so what are the various kinds of sub substances present in the blood they are plasma red blood cells rbc wbc white blood cells and as well as platelets so all these things together come in the blood blood is composed of all these type of cells these help in transportation so the first thing blood consists is plasma so the fluid part of the blood blood the liquid part of the blood is nothing but the plasma then we have rbcs rbcs are nothing but red blood corpuscles or red blood cells you can say they contain a red colored pigment called hemoglobin the hemoglobin only gives the blood the color red so rbc are the red blood cells they are cells which are red in color blood is red in color because of the presence of rbc why is rbc red in color because they contain hemoglobin hemoglobin is nothing but iron that is why sometimes if you have iron deficiency you get weakness anemia then doctors give you iron syrups to increase the blood quantity in your body so hemoglobin binds oxygen o2 and transports it to all parts of the body and to all the cells the function of hemoglobin is binding oxygen and transportation of blood to all cells of the body so rbcs are cells of the blood they are red colored they contain a pigment called hemoglobin hemoglobin function is to bind the oxygen and transport to all parts of the body so this presence of hemoglobin hb makes the blood appear red so the red color is due to the presence of rbcs 
Then next moving on to the WBC. WBCs are nothing but the white blood cells. These are mainly responsible for immunity of the body. If there is decrease in the number of WBCs, you get infections or you get germs attacked in your body. So WBC count is very important. WBC white blood cells fight against the germs or infection in the body. So it is mainly responsible for the immunity of the body. Whenever there is decrease in the WBC count, there is it shows or indicates that there is presence of some infection in your body. Suppose if you get fever, cough or cold, that means there is some bacterial or viral attack in your body. That means they have attacked the WBCs. And WBCs also have the power of autoimmunity. So they automatically fight the infection as soon as the germs attack your body. So those are WBC. They are responsible for the immunity. And the last thing about blood contains is platelets. They are responsible for clotting of the blood. So whenever suppose you have a cut and there is a bleeding, blood has something called bleeding time as well as clotting time. So the clotting time is not more than 3 to 6 minutes. Within 3 minutes your blood will clot. But how will the blood clot automatically by itself? Because blood has something called platelets. Blood has something called platelets which come at the site of injury, make a fibrin elastic like structure over the blood and stop the clotting. So platelets are responsible for clotting of the blood. And you know the diseases like dengue, no? Because of the mosquito attack. When the mosquito bites, we get dengue fever. In dengue fever, what happens, you know? The platelet count will be decreased a lot. So artificially, we have to give platelets to the affected person. So that is how platelets is important. And this is about the blood content of the circulatory system. The next thing in the circulatory system is blood vessels. So during inhalation, that is during when we take the air inside, when we breathe, fresh supply of oxygen fills the lungs, right? We do like this, fresh supply of the oxygen fills the lungs. And this oxygen is then transported from the lungs to various parts of the body. Then during exhalation, what happens? That means when you breathe out, blood goes back to the heart. That is, the blood goes back to the heart for transportation to the lungs and for the removal of carbon dioxide and during exhalation the carbon dioxide is removed by transportation process. So blood vessels briefly are two types, arteries and as well as veins and there is also a small category called capillaries. So arteries, what is the function of artery? Artery carries oxygen rich blood from the heart to all parts of the body. Arteries transport oxygen rich blood to all parts of the body. Then blood flow is very rapid with high pressure. So arteries have thick walls. Arteries are thick walls. They carry oxygen from the blood. They carry oxygen rich blood from the heart to various parts of the body. They are very thick walled because the blood flow is very rapid. That is continuous and with high pressure. So that is about arteries. Arteries are always indicated with red color. Anywhere if you draw or in any chart you see, arteries are always indicated with red color. Then moving on to veins. Veins carry carbon dioxide rich blood from parts of the body back to the heart. So it is the opposite of the arteries. Carries oxygen rich blood from, from various parts of the body back to the heart. They are thin walled. They do not have much pressure. Walls are present in the veins which allow blood to flow only towards the heart. So veins carry all the blood back to the heart rich with carbon dioxide. Arteries carry blood rich with oxygen from the heart to various parts of the body. That is the basic difference between arteries and veins. And veins are always indicated with blue color. Whenever you draw, whenever you see a chart, veins will always be indicated with blue color. Then you have something called capillaries. These arteries are divided into small, small vessels which have thin tube-like structures called capillaries. Arteries are divided into thin tube-like structures called capillaries. What is the function of capillaries? They join to form the veins which empty into the heart. So, blood from the oxygen-rich blood from the heart goes to various parts of the body through capillary. Again, these capillaries in return form the veins and transport the blood back. Thus, these capillaries, the blood from the heart is transported to various parts of the body through arteries. Arteries divide to form small small tube like structures called cap capillaries. These capillaries again join to form veins 
which empty into the heart way arteries divide into capillaries capillaries continue as veins and transport back the body transport back the blood from various parts of the body to the heart that is about capillaries so then we have something called pulse rate many of us do this the doctors do this they put the inner part of our wrist we put fingers and feel some throbbing sounds so what is all this throbbing sounds these are nothing but known as the pulse rate pulse rate is number of beats per minute so when you put like this and absorb you feel some throbbing sound that is nothing but pulse rate how many beats are there in one minute indicates the pulse rate and the normal pulse rate is 72 to 80 beats per minute suppose if you have run for 5 minutes and then you count your pulse rate it will be higher because blood flows very rapidly when you run when you do any physical activity but the normal pulse rate is 72 to 80 beats per minute and pulse is felt at the inner side of the wrist inner side of the wrist and throbbing movement of the pulse is due to the blood flowing in the arteries how is this sound heard because of the blood flowing in the arteries the sound is heard the throbbing movement is heard so this is about the blood vessels, arteries, veins and capillaries, the functions of these and as well as the pulse rate is determined with the help of arteries. When the blood is flowing through the arteries, we feel a throbbing sound near the inner side of the wrist which helps us in counting the pulse rate.